Hi everyone, this is Jeff Kelly. You're watching Pivotal Stories here at Spring One Platform 2018. My guest is Kyle McNiff, who's Chief Engineer at Raytheon. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thank you, good to be here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, So tell us a little bit about Raytheon and your digital transformation and some of the drivers. Sure, so within Raytheon, it's primarily DOD customers. And what we have been seeing and is picking up the speed is the softwareization, as we like to say, of everything that we're doing across service, across customers. Everything is being pushed to capability enhancements, being more software-driven than hardware-driven. And there's a lot of advantages to that, but there's also a lot of challenges in the way that DOD has traditionally acquired. Raytheon's really focused on that transformation, not only within the DOD, but how can we adapt quickly to meet our customers faster, to push them capabilities faster. Raytheon is transforming as well as your customers in the Absolutely. defense uh, the defense agencies, DOD, Army, uh, Navy, et cetera. So working in that sector, I imagine there could be some challenges maybe unique to that sector, which is you know highly uh, obviously regulated and there's rules that you have to follow as well as um, you know a culture of following orders and hierarchy. Uh, and when you're trying to implement some agile processes, I imagine there could be some challenges there. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the unique challenges you face working with defense agencies and such? You mentioned policies and procedures. A lot of the way the DOD is driven is to drive risk out of the equation. And sometimes that comes at the expense of speed. What we're trying to do within Raytheon and what we're seeing a lot of our customers adapt to as well is how do you work that balance and understand the risk? For us, a lot of times that uh, drives into how do you make sure that you're knowing what your risk is? How are you adhering to policies but tailoring procedures? And where do we have low risk opportunities to go demonstrate to our customer that we can drive quality to the left faster by doing things, not, not breaking the mold, but doing things differently and really accomplishing the same tenets of why those policies and procedures are in place in different ways. Adhering to the policies, but doing it in a different way. So it's still safe and secure, but you're able to innovate. Yes. Great. Could you add maybe a little color around that? So what are some of the, the projects you've worked on you know, with uh, the different defense agencies, Department of Defense you mentioned, there's Air Force, Navy, and others. What are some of the things you've, uh, you've been working on? Within Raytheon, what we're trying to do, partnering with the DOD, is to step back and really evaluate how can we get them capability faster. A lot of the challenges that we face are not technical challenges. A lot of it's the way that the acquisition system is structured, or even frankly, some of our own internal processes and procedures, and really trying to lean into that. And we're having success with that within the Air Force, starting to within the Army, and recently within the Navy as well, is seeing that appetite for uh, fast capability insertion. Raytheon's stepping back and looking very, very hard at buy versus make. And by that, I mean, we know that there's a lot of Silicon Valley companies, a lot of great technology out there that can be leveraged and should be leveraged. There's so much more investment in that sector and the speed of technology is really outpacing the speed of acquisition. What Raytheon's really leaning into hard is evaluating where we go partner and really push our investments and our engagements so that we're pulling those things in, bringing those technologies to the customer in a way where security is still paramount and where we're able to help Those small businesses may not be used to either the way that customers acquire, uh, the way that uh, they put things on contract, or even how certain things get pushed through the system. We can help navigate that space in a way that helps bring those technologies to our customers faster. We're really able to lean into extreme programming techniques and test-driven development, user-centered design, in ways that even teams that within Raytheon were pretty mature from an agile perspective were able to go farther and do more really finding how a lot of the methodologies that Pivotal embraces and could, could help us learn quickly. And that's what really was impressive to us was the speed at which the team was able to get up and running quickly, able to cut a lot of uh, our larger stories in half in terms of the duration, mostly because of the methods driving that interpersonal interaction and really driving multifunctional collaboration amongst the team. Whereas before, even within an agile construct, a lot of our disciplines were fairly siloed. So breaking down those walls and leaning in, we're able to drive value faster to the customer 
And that's what Raytheon's really looking to do, partnering with Pivotal, is how do we go buy versus make? There's still gonna be core technologies and key capabilities that we do, but where we can drive things and say, hey, a Pivotal Ready architecture helps drive us to transformation of applications to meet emerging needs faster and drive more automation, we absolutely want to go do that. So we're seeing that, seeing early returns on that, and seeing that appetite across services with our customers. We're really excited about the opportunity space. There. Right, so the, the partnership with Pivotal is both working on the cultural transformation as well as the technology transformation and marrying those two. Yes. You mentioned Pivotal Ready Architecture. Can you talk about how PRA, but more generally some of the, some of the software, the technology you're working with, is helping drive some of those changes in addition to the cultural aspects? So it all really does work together, and you kind of have to have all legs of the stool to make it all work together. So people, tools, process, culture, uh, those are things that are not easy to overturn in a day within large organizations, especially within the DoD space where we are uh, really driven by our customers' acquisition and federated chunks. The Navy buys different than the Army, the Army buys different than the Air Force, and within each service, each PEO buys a little bit differently. So. Navigating that space, it's very helpful to be able to embrace all aspects, culture of tools, you know, the cultural aspects, tools, people, to really go figure out how to go innovate and drive change. Uh, within the tools side, what we are seeing is a significant lift in terms of day two deployment. So as opposed to having a, a significant amount of do it yourself in terms of your CI CD pipeline or your platform and how you orchestrate everything, being able to go readily deploy something that is trusted and can drive that automation faster is a significant lift. And that's really where we're, we're trying to focus a lot of our efforts and figuring out how can we go deploy, what makes sense as fast as we can. Sometimes ahead of our customers buying it that way, we have a lot of customers that don't necessarily have a continuous deployment to operations or production demand but the type of things that they want to do and the amount of automation that we can drive is still a benefit them to even stage capabilities faster that they can then put to their test phases more frequently. Still a benefit. So we talked a little bit in advance and you mentioned this idea of empowering teams to experiment, try new things, which of course is critical if you're trying to you know, push the envelope and pr provide new capabilities. But you talked about how that can actually lead them to think through risk in a, in a new way. Uh, that yes. kind of caught my ear. What do you mean by that? So again, Within, within many companies, they're going to have their own policies. Within DOD, there's certain policies and procedures that exist. Those drive our internal policies and procedures to a large degree. A lot of the engineering processes, especially, that we use to tailor and run our programs are meant to minimize risk and ensure repeatability. All good things. What a lot of teams struggle with, though, when they're trying something new is does that break the mold? And so what I've been encouraged about within Raytheon is seeing how our leadership has really embraced that experimentation mentality and understanding that if you start small and grow with minimum viable products, you do minimize your risk because you're not shutting the lights off on a large program, switching tracks, turning it back on and hoping everything works okay. So what our leadership has really done to drive down and encourage is go into a questioning mode. So when teams bring up concerns about what process might they be breaking, really stepping back and asking and engaging them to drive that accountability and thought leadership down to the lowest level possible, because that's really where you want the team thinking through and making the right decisions themselves versus a hierarchical structure, which in and of itself is going to drive some element of, of, of pacing the capability. Doing that, again, not across the board because you can't have complete chaos, but really encouraging certain spots where we think we'll get significant lift with Pivotal Partnership and where we could get significant lift from an automation perspective and a cultural perspective. Really having teams feel empowered and letting them know that if they have questions they should ask, we want to find out what works and then put the right controls in place versus figure out all the controls before you take your first step. It. It's a balance, but choosing where to do those, uh, working with customers who <clears throat> perhaps don't have uh, it's a backlog-driven contract versus a firm performance deliverable schedule that they're having to adhere to. There's places within even our DOD base where we can go work with our customers to go lean in and show that we can drive that increased automation, drive that quality to the left uh, while adhering to security and driving that security in at the same time. All of value, so being able to demonstrate that and helping teams to really think through 
it's not taking on risk. That they're, they're not really taking on risk. They're accomplishing the tenets of the process in a different way. Right. Oftentimes, just in smaller chunks, really. That's right, yeah, this is what to. you touched on earlier. Okay, it's, it's all coming together for me. That, that, that was a great explanation. Of course, another big issue, anytime you're working with uh, defense agencies, is security. Uh, and when you're moving quickly, it's kind of counterintuitive, but we find that uh, the, the faster you're moving, actually, you can lower risk that way. And you kind of just touched on that. Um, but in terms of actually dealing with security policies and compliance issues that maybe you don't even have necessarily the, the ability to change, you really do have to follow these, these rules because they're set on high somewhere. How do you think about maintaining security in this kind of environment and, and dealing with those kind of rules and regulations? That's really where I think Raytheon stands apart from its competitors. Within Raytheon, especially within our portion of the business, cyber automation and, 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 and analytics are core to our, to our being as IIS within Raytheon. So we're already structured in ways to help our customers navigate through transition between the old DIACAP standard to RMF. How do you put those controls in place? How do you not let your systems lapse their accreditation? That's germane to what we do day in and day out. So that's where we have a great fit with partnering with other businesses to bring in technology and work with our customers and map out those paths to achieve either an interim, an IATT, or a path to a full ATO, knowing what the risks are in front of you and figuring out where to go tackle those risks. That's really core to what we do. And I agree with you that when you have a process where you're able to insert change quickly, automate tests quickly, you're able to not only deploy faster, but you're actually able to bake in the security and quality as you go before you have too large a pile of code to figure out what the problem is. Right, absolutely. Uh, well, fantastic. And you know, as we wrap up, what's on your agenda, let's say the next six, 12 months? Let's say we're back here having this conversation again at spring one. Uh, what are some of the things you hope to accomplish at Raytheon and with your, with your clients? So within Raytheon, what we're really looking at is software transformation. That sounds really broad and really big. But what we know is that within the DoD space, there are lots of commercial companies that are starting to infiltrate that space. And we recognize that you can, again, I'll say the buy versus make is a, is a critical discriminating factor in how you go prosecute the market. What we're really driving for is how do we go recruit and retain the right talent to go develop and deploy software capabilities faster for our customers. So in doing so, we're looking on partnering with Pivotal, pushing folks through labs experiences, learning those tenets of the methodologies, getting experiences on the platform to drive automation, deploying that in many places as we can. So we're making earnest efforts to put software centers of excellence at various sites within our company, leveraging Pivotal's model so that we can grow within ourselves and really spread and figure out how to go tailor across our portfolio to bring that capability to our customers as fast as we can. Fantastic. Well, it's really impressive stuff you've done. Kyle, thanks so much sure. for taking the time to chat. Thank you.